जय श्री माता जी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लेट्स बो डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन श्री गणेश मंत्रा Now let us listen to Shri Mata Ji's speech. Shri Krishna resides in our Vishuddhi Chakra. In the center, he resides as Shri Krishna. On the left hand side, his power, Vishnu Maya, his sister, resides. there he resides as gopala as the one who lived in gokul 
played as a child. On the right hand side, he decides as the king who ruled in Dwarika, the king Sri Krishna. These are the three sides of a Rishi teacher. The people who use their right side to dominate others use their voice to put down people, to show their authority, shout at people, are the people who get affected by the right side. The right side is caught up. On the physical side, you get a very big problem because the right heart cannot work out its flow. So you get what you call asthma and all these diseases. But especially when the right heart is affected by the father's problem. On the left side is the Vishnu Maya. It's the sisterly relationship. When the sister who is your pure relation is not treated as a sister, when the attitude of a person towards women is of indulgence and of lust, then he develops the left Vishuddhi. When he develops a left Vishuddhi very strongly, and if he has a bad agya, or if he has eyes which are roving eyes, then this left Vishuddhi causes a lot of trouble. Left Vishuddhi can be also caused by, as you know, by feeling guilty about things or nothing at all. All these problems arise from Vishuddhi. But Vishuddhi chakra has a speciality. When the human beings raise their head upward from Mother Earth towards the sky, sky is, ether is Sri Krishna's nature. When he traced his head towards the ether, towards the sky, then this Vishuddhi chakra developed into a different dimension and people started developing the ego and superego. Superego was already developed, but ego developed in such a way that it started suppressing the superego. That's how you have got conditionings on one side of the Vishuddhi and ego on the other side. When I told you the other day that you give up your free will in the sense that when you raised your head, you did it through your free will with your power of growing that you had as animals. After that, now you have reached to the human level and to rise above the human level. Now, you have to do is to seek your complete freedom. And for that, Vishuddhi Chakra is going to help you along. On this Vishuddhi Chakra, we have to really pay full attention. It is such a complicated chakra. It has all the vowels of a Devanagari script emitting out of the sound of the Shakti that is passing through it, of the Kundalini that is passing through it. So all the vowels are heard on these chakras. These vowels are, as you know, 16 in number. Without the vowel in the Devanagari, you cannot write anything. Vowels are the sustenance, are the power that supports every consonant. So it's very important that our vowels have to be fully nourished and respected. The movement of the neck, as you have seen, in all international life, if you see, everybody has practically the same. Even those who cannot hear, those who do not understand your language, you can nod like this, you can say no like this. Everyone understands 
this is yes or no. In some particular areas, of course, they have little different type of nodding. But too much of nodding of head is not a very good sign. I have seen people in the West, if you tell them something to show that they have appreciated it, they'll go on <laughs> for quite some time. <laughs> That's not necessary. Just have to say, all right, or I've understood it. That's all. You have to use your voice instead of nodding like this all the time. It's very bad, very, very bad for the Vishuddha Chakra. Or some of them are the other way around. That whatever it is, they'll put up their head like this. <laughs> and they won't talk properly. They will not say a word, they'll just keep quiet. You may go on pinching them, doing anything, they won't budge. This kind of personality is also very much detrimental to the growth of their evolution. Apart from that, their Vishuddhi becomes a very big problem. Because of Vishuddhi, there are so many problems. Like angina, you develop because of Vishuddhi. You develop spondylitis because of Vishuddhi. Sometimes people lose their voices completely. Sometimes they have all the time coughing. And there are so many physical problems out of Vishuddhi because, as I said, it's a very, very complicated center. It looks after, after your ear, nose, throat, all the 16 subplexuses are there, which are looked after by the center. But above all is the center of discrimination. The center of discrimination only comes when you are free people. Till you are biased, till you have your own concepts, you cannot be discreet. And that's the one point where one must understand that to achieve your complete freedom, you have to get your Vishuddhi Chakra cleared up. First and foremost thing is that we must speak in a sweet manner. Speak to someone in a sweet manner. Not artificially, but sweetly. Speak in a manner that another person likes it. Satyam vadet, priyam vadet. Speak the truth. Don't tell the lies. If you go on telling lies, after some time, even if you tell the truth, it will become a lie. But if you are telling the truth, that even if you tell a lie, it becomes a truth. <laughs> now, <clears throat> some people think that they can be cunning by their talks, they can cheat. But actually they are cheating themselves. All such people who cheat others by sweet talks, by artificial talks, or by some maneuvering, go to such a horrible state. And in this Kali Yuga especially, they are cursed and they get exposed. And people know about them, that these are the greatest liars ever known. Now the times are coming when all such people will be exposed very much more than they have been ever exposed. So be careful not to think that you can cheat. In Sahaja Yoga especially you cannot cheat. Those who try to cheat sometimes think that we can be full mother, we can somehow or other carry on. If we sit in front of mother, she won't know what we are up to. It's not so. I may not say, I may use my discretion not to say, I may allow you to have a long way, but be careful. Do not come into my illusions. I'm very elusive. And when I play my illusions, you will suddenly find yourself in a very difficult situation, and then you will say, Mother, why am I in this situation? So this is one of the qualities of Shri Krishna, that he is the one who becomes elusive. In his elusiveness, not cunning, but elusive, in his elusiveness, he exposes people to themselves. There are so many stories of Sri Krishna in which he has elusively acted to give greater joy to some people, to give nice lessons to some people, and sometimes to punish. For us, it is important that we are Sahaja 
in this lifetime we have a chance our kundalini has risen that we can face ourselves that we can correct our chakras that we know about ourselves that we know where is the problem is i have known of people who were caught up with left issue these and have become devilish by nature devilish they have gone out of sahaja yoga they have criticized sahaja yoga they have tried to trouble me a lot so don't think that if we should this point there's nothing so special about it it can be a very dangerous center of course heart agya and we should be these three centers one has to guard against because three of them can allow you or can force you to become one with identification of evil as your own you might just feel that it's nice to be evil you might just feel that it is a great fun to be evil and you might become evil so at the vishuddhi chakra one has to be extremely careful vishuddhi chakra looks after so many things especially your skin your eyes skin is now i have seen people who have bad vishuddhi can have all kinds of funny troubles with their skin of course it has to do with your liver but skin is the way it shines the way it glows depends on how you smile how you look at the world many people have a habit of smiling for nothing at all especially women i have seen ladies have seen they just smile stupidly that's not for one should not be stupid stupidity is against shri krishna's principle like you have seen the stupid people how they are the tongue is always half way out if you have noticed the stupid man his face is that his tongue is always out mouth half open and he looks like a dumbfounded fool now in this only the bishop the place part another one is the one where you get the issue these strains so such a person has very pursed lips angry lips and he doesn't talk the another one might even get the expression of a idiot but could be just making a face like that because if he's cunning he may take a i would say a kind of a rupa or what to say huh? a mask mask you can say a mask on his face that he is an idiot i may try to deceive you so nothing is uh, definite about vishuddhi whatever may be the expression of a person a person may look very innocent because that's the thing you can with your vishuddhi you are free because you have raised your head at this point you have achieved this kind of a special aptitude that <clears throat> you can deceive yourself and you can deceive others some people look extremely innocent on the face they may look to be very simple people but may turn out to be hot some people may look to be idiotic but may be very intelligent so it is how you play with your vishuddhi which is <coughs> which is responsible <coughs> but the main thing what i'm trying to tell you that you can maneuver your issue the way you want to put your expression the way you want to make your face the way you want to suggest something all you can maneuver and you can keep your heart away from it in the heart you may have poison for a person but outwardly you may say to that person in a very sweet manner something that the person might feel impressed but in this all this behavior pattern of behavior you are deceiving yourself not deceiving the another person because your self is spirit which knows you very well and this will go on and on 
for all your lives that have to come. So there is no need in any way to be artificial in your expression. There is no need to hide anything in your expression. Of course, I mean, if you don't like someone, you need not just say, I don't like you. But in that case, you have to be not also so much appreciative of the person that he's deluded into your appreciation. Now, eyes are very important. And eyes, in a way, are very much looked after by Vishuddhi because the muscles of the eyes are looked after <coughs> by Vishuddhi. Now, the kind of muscles we have, which pull our eyes, which close our eyelids and all that, is very much suggestive. You must notice that there are some people who come to me, their eyes go on like this when they close their eyes. They cannot keep it shut. There are some people, when they open their eyes to me, they just keep the eyes open. They just cannot close it. Both are in trouble. The ones which are the ones which are just keeping the eyes open all the time are the people having supraconscious moods. And those who are flickering their eyes are having the subconscious mood. Some people have also the habit of uh, <coughs> keeping the eyes in an angle all the time. They never see you straight, but uh, in an angle they see. <laughs> Uh, they think it's sometimes it's very fashionable. Sometimes ladies think it's a very good way of looking at people. And some of them have such eyes that they'll go on, you know, looking and pouring their greedy eyes onto others or their lusty eyes onto others. This is the first thing you can do to your eyes because such people are easily can become blind. Such people might have trouble of the eyes. Especially reddening of the eyes can come to such people very much, very quickly. So one has to be careful to keep the eyes very pure, the eyes of an Yogeshwara who was Sri Krishna. He was a witness. He, he was on this earth. He, play, he played with Radha. He married five women. They were the five elements. 16,000 women he married. They were his... 16,000 powers, but he was Yogeshwara. He was Yogeshwara. He had no lust in his eyes, in his mind about them at all. He was beyond them. He was Yogeshwara. That was the testing point of his, that he had no lust in his eyes about these women that he had. Such an Yogeshwara is there. Of course, I don't expect you to be Shri Krishna, but you have your wife. Those who do not have wife must look forward to a wife that will get wives and will be uh, will have a wife and think of a wife who will be your own so that your eyes will not fall onto every woman who comes across uh, with that kind of a thing. I've seen people, even the photographs or anything they see is surprising. I mean, there's nothing in a photograph. What is in a photograph? But even a photograph can attract their attention. I mean, I don't know what can attract their attention like this, but they are so vulnerable and they have no control over their eyes. No control. They become absolutely lost and they have no control. That shows that they have no powers in them and they are slaves of their responses. So the eyes are very, very important as Christ has said, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. There should be no adultery. Some people have a habit of showing anger with the eyes. You see, they have to show anger with the eyes, they'll just go on looking like this and show the anger. I need, dare not do that to you, but still. <laughs> and the angry eyes, you see, are another dangerous thing to do with your eyes because then they can become mesmeric. If you start putting your eyes onto something and concentrating on it, your eyes might become mesmeric, means boots will start coming out of your eyes. First of all, you'll catch boots in your eyes, they'll settle down there, and then they will be falling on other people as boots. It's a very, very dangerous thing to go on looking at something continuously with concentration. There's another kind of a stupid thing or a bhutish thing maybe, 
that people ask you to meditate here is absolutely wrong. In Gita it is written, still it is wrong. Nobody should put attention here. If they have to put attention, put attention at the door. What's the use of looking at a window? You can't get out of it, can you? If you have to look at anything, be on the lookout for the door. And the door is here. The door of Sahasrara is to be opened out. So you should not try to concentrate on this part. Many people who have concentrated on this part have become mad. When they become mad, people say he is a yogi but has got unmani dasha, that he moves like a madcap. How can a yogi be a madcap? That means he is united with God. Is he mad? <laughs> All such mad people are really mad. They have nothing to do with God, definitely. But there are people who believe in such things. Oh, he is in love with God, so he just jumps on the stage and goes into ecstasy, he dances like a madcap. How can God be mad? First position is this, that the sanest personality is God. Has to be. From where do the sanity come? So this is one thing one has to understand that any such practices can lead you to lunacy and one should not be. Thirdly, the indiscretion that one has comes from people who are good-hearted, nice people, but they get carried away by uh, the smiles of others or by the artificial uh, goodness they show on their faces. I have known some people, they always have a face like this, as if they are all the time smiling. You know, I can't do that way. <laughs> all the time if you look at somebody like this, you see, it looks as if you are mocking at a person. And there are people I've seen who just like this every time, get them like this. <laughs> so, one should not be always in one pose. Sometimes these muscles can get very weak and start paining if you take one. There are some others who always try to show they are very miserable. <laughs> I don't know what do they want to attract. Attract the attention of others, attract uh, the boots in themselves, or I don't know what are they up to. Why can't they keep a normal face? Even while sitting in dhyan or meditation, I've seen them trying to show me or me, whatever it is, because my eyes are mostly cold, closed, but doesn't matter. When I open my eyes, I find some people like this, like that. <laughs> Why? What is the need? You have to have a balanced face. That's what Sri Krishna has described the Sita Pranya. One who is balanced. Who doesn't laugh like an Indian? Who laughs, but not like an Indian? nor is a serious, like another kind of an idiot. So both the things are not at all expression of your inner being. Such a person is, as I told you today, is not frivolous, but not serious either, but full of joy within himself. He doesn't want you to be unhappy. Never would like that you should be unhappy people. But human beings, if they want to be unhappy, what can anybody help because they have got the free will to be unhappy? They have got a free will to cut their nose, they have a free will to cut their ears, they have free will to commit suicide. They have this free will, so called. Now the greatest free will comes from Vishuddhi as I told you. And that's why we call him Yogeshwara. He is the Ishwara of Yoga. The establishment of yoga is possible when you surrender yourself to Shri Krishna. Completely surrender yourself to Shri Krishna. Your yoga will be established. Means what? Means all your balances will be established. You go into complete balance. And that balance is complete because Vishnu, who is the incarnation for sustaining the dharma, who is responsible for giving you the balance, becomes complete in the form of Sri Krishna. 
That's why he said that you leave all the dharmas. Sarva dharma anam parityaja mame kam sarnam raja. That's why I surrender all of them to you. So all the dharmas, if you put it at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna, means if you follow his ideas, then all your dharmas are balanced. But after realization, you go beyond that.
Shumataji for this collective morning meditation. Thank you very much. Let's bow down to Shumataji, raise our Mother Kundalini and put Bandhan. is joined tomorrow as well as we continue our collective morning meditation. <laughs> 